People, welcome to Newspaper Breakdown. It is the 4th of the 1st. I hope we are all something. Um, we'll start with something that isn't, isn't necessarily like the normal topical news that I deal in, but it is interesting with the uh, rise of disinformation uh, it, that is attacking Western democracies uh, with authoritarian states evolving uh, how they work and people in the West becoming dumber. Um, along with Musk making Twitter worse, Facebook poisoning your auntie, um, destroying the fucking mind, uh, the spread of inf uh, disinformation is growing. Um, so people are looking into ways of how to solve that particular conundrum. There are some interesting things going on at the moment in 2023. We expect to see a raft of new legislation, both uh, uh, from the UK, EU, US, uh, Australia, um, uh, we'll including things like the UK's Online Safety Bill and the EU's Media Freedom Act. Uh, though with bills like this, it is always important to have a look and see what's being taken away uh, with the excuse of protection. Because with big bills that do a lot, you tend to find that they also do take some freedoms away from you. And it is a constant question that any civilization has how it's freedom against safety isn't it constantly freedom against safety where do you stand on that this is the question i mean you go outside i live in london everywhere you got there's a fucking camera the only reason we have so many cameras safety it's all safety the investigatory powers act was taking away our freedoms for safety every fucking uh, new terrorist law that comes in every four seconds is about removing your freedom for safety um, uh, Freedom's House, uh, which is an independent monetary, uh, no, uh, monitoring, that's it, uh, Freedom House, the independent monitoring body, uh, has said that every region in the world, dem uh, democracy is under attack. It's a major problem. Uh, you see the growth over the past 15 years of authoritarian states. You've got over half of the world, uh, at my last count, under an authoritarian regime. Democracy at this point isn't winning. You have a look over what happened since, I mean, since 2016 going forward in claimed democracies. And you see that the idea of a democracy is being attacked constantly, online being the major thing that does it. You know, we all want, we all want that, that sweet, sweet simplicity that uh, the light of disinformation gives you and also on the other side of that the the ability to feel uh, I think feel intelligent with a lot of conspiracies the ability to feel like you've got one over like oh, I saw this you couldn't you can't see this you can't see what they're doing but I see what they're doing I always think conspiracies the majority of governments I don't think any real government requires conspiracy but they love a conspiracy the government adores a conspiracy because a conspiracy will keep you looking over there where everything they're doing, they're doing it out in the open. But you're too busy trying to see if fucking King Charles's sausage fingers are proof that he's a fucking lizard or some shit. Uh, Finland, uh, which is rated as Europe's most resistant nation to fake news, uses education and teaches digital literacy in schools. Uh, critical thinking has also become a core component of education. Those two things I think are fucking brilliant. What wonderful ideas. You teach people at a young age that not only uh, should you not trust everything online and give them some uh, knowledge on how to navigate uh, the online world, but you also teach them about critical thinking. I think that's fantastic. Critical thinking is a very interesting uh, concept because it's one of those concepts that is used by both the left and the right to believe that they are the only ones capable of it. Um, critical thinking uh, and like f free thinking 
you've got a lot of the conspiracy far right small dick wank stains uh, fucking misogynistic alpha male wanks uh, love to go oh, I'm a free thinker I am a free thinker I think for myself I do critical thinking I think for myself my thoughts are free that's because no one would pay for them um, the reason I, I, I started off speaking about uh, this as a start is simple question how do you trust me uh, I'm just a comedian who is doing something that is not funny um, this isn't meant to be funny by the by if I wanted it I would have spent more time writing punchlines but this is because I have a big interest in politics and this is a very good way for me to do my research and also I find it interesting um, but don't trust me do some research yourself I look at a wide range of things every morning uh, from Guardian to the FT, Business Insider, uh, Byline Times, uh, countless, countless other little uh, off-scales, uh, transparency, whatever they're called. There's lots of stuff that I uh, look at and I try to look at the sources for the information that I'm uh, getting down to say but still don't trust me i'm just a bloke you know, that's all i am a fucking comedian for christ's sake i shouldn't i shouldn't be anyone's uh, main port of call for news if i am thank you i try my best to make sure that uh, i'm accurate but good god in heaven i'm just a bloke you know um we've got a few other pieces of news uh you've got uh, the extinction rebellion have quit uh uh, they've quit the mass disruptions uh, as they've not gotten the desired uh, action that they thought they would get from it. Uh, they will still organise demonstrations, but just on behalf of the world, thank you very much. Well done. You have managed to take away hope from children. It's truly an exceptional, exceptional piece of work. Um, that's it's on the <laughs> Extinction Rebellion. Just, ah. Well, we thought we could make a change. It turns out people care more about them having their lives even remotely, remotely put at a touch of inconvenience, much more than they care about the entire world dying. Um, it was going to be fun because the generations, uh, well, one or two generations after us, the final things that they're going to do as the world ends is literally dance on your graves. I reckon that, that, I mean, if that was me, that's what I'd be doing. As the final fucking flickers of the earth go, I would be char charring all over the grave, mate. Uh, over in the US, uh, the battle to become Speaker of the House of Representatives, uh, the uh, main front runner, uh, Kevin McCarthy, uh, was expected to replace Nancy Pelosi uh, as the next speaker has found it hard to get the amount of uh, votes required to uh, win from his own side um, Republicans do have enough they have a majority the uh, own uh, House of Representatives to become the speaker you need uh, a majority of votes 218 Republicans have more than that, not by much, but they do have more than that. However, there are 20 of uh, the, the, the nutters you would expect, the extreme nutters in an already nutter fucking uh, party are not voting for it. Three times they've uh, tried to do the vote and three times he has not got enough. This is the first time since 1923 that uh, a speaker in the House of Representatives hasn't been voted for in the first ballot. Exceptional work. It is just fucking beautiful. The US is, the Republican Party is eating itself. But you've got uh, that, that uh, small amount, you see the power that a small amount of people have. It's like the Tories in the UK with the uh, ERG which is the European Research Group, uh, ironically named because none of them can fucking read. Um, but they're the bigots that help push through uh, uh, Brexit and all of that shit. Tedious bores. Um, 
But that's the same with over in the Republicans. You've got 20 people. I mean, Republicans have got a majority, but that's the thing when you only have a small majority. If you only have a small majority, you can't do much because you are bent over by the uh, tiny people who think you're a cunt. What have we got? We've got uh, the government has signed a £2,000 a year contract with a disaster response charity for... Um, you know, this, was, uh, this was established by a former um, Britons uh, for the... Okay, let, let's start that bit again. Uh, the government has signed a £2,000 a year contract with the disaster response charity uh, react established by the former head of Britain's armed forces to help drivers stuck in lorry queues in Kent. This is amid concerns for uh, driver welfare. Uh, the government has enlisted uh, react who use military veterans to distribute humanitarian aid in war zones and natural disasters. That's how bad Brexit is, by the way. We are literally having to employ people who work in natural fucking disasters and war zones as an attempt to make sure that lorry drivers do not die. Do not forget, it's only Greenland fucking wonder. We are in halcyon, halcyon days at the moment. Bend over and kiss your whole goodbye. Uh, this uh, contract started last November and it is there to uh, distribute food and water to drivers if there is a standstill for more than two days. So if you're sat there for two days, you're absolutely fine. But that, that ticket over, oh, now you need help. Uh, this is going to be quite a long bit. Uh, we've only got two news stories, but one of it's quite long. Uh, it's on the NHS, so you expect it to be really. And it's, it's seemingly every day that there's a new uh, apocalyptic uh, story on the N uh, on the NHS. Uh, doctors uh, have accused Sunak of being delusional uh, after denying that the NHS is in crisis. Uh, with this is with mounting anger over shortages and delays causing unnecessary deaths as we said in a previous one of these uh, it is uh, estimated that we're having between three and five hundred deaths a week that are uh, as a cause of these disruptions um, doctors and opposition were angered further by comments made by Sunak's official spokesperson at the uh, Downing Street briefing. So although Sunak may not want to admit, and this goes back to disinformation, you know, it is, if he keeps on saying that the NHS isn't in crisis, yet it is in crisis, that is disinformation, surely, must be. Um, although he doesn't want to admit that uh, the NHS is in crisis. Let's have a look at a couple of the reasons why it is. Um, we have a fifth wave of COVID since the appearance of Omicron uh, back in uh, 2021. Uh, at the same time, influenza uh, is surging, driven by an increase in social mixing uh, as distancing provisions taken during the pandemic uh, are relaxed. Top doctors in the UK warned last week that we were in the midst of a twindemic. I do not particularly like that word, but it does what it says on the tin at that point, doesn't it? It's a pandemic with two other fuckers. About 7% of the 100,000 general and acute beds in England are filled with patients with flu or COVID. High, that's a, that's a, that's a decent fucking percentage, mate. Other infections are also circulating at higher levels uh, than uh, at a normal winter, uh, partly due to the immunity levels being less uh, owing to a lack of exposure over the past three years. So that's going to be good news for the conspiracy theories uh, for health nuts who don't read, um, who like to say that staying inside and lockdown actually damaged us 
comparatively it fucking didn't um we also do not have enough beds in the NHS. The OECD figures show that the UK has the lowest number of hospital beds per head in Europe after Sweden. Just a third of the number that Germany has. Um, we need more space. Uh, so the potential, the, I tell you, the 40, the 40 uh, hospitals that Boris Johnson's going to build, they'll be fucking needed now. Of course, we'll... Uh, go through into the uh, bit after this to show that even if you had 40 new beds, it still, I mean, 40 new hospitals, it still wouldn't work. And then, of course, the 40 hospitals that Boris Johnson was talking about, he lied. He, he lied. He, he lied. Um, uh, so we need more space, but we could also uh, get more room if we um, discharge the over 10,000. Uh, patients currently uh, who are medically able to leave but cannot because uh, they have nowhere to go. Uh, we have said countless, countless times it feels like on this that uh, lack of social care uh, figures, lack of money in social care is fucking destroying things. Um, uh, to that, to solve that particular issue, we need more money in social care. That's what we need. We need to uh, train more people in social care. Uh, there are currently around 165,000 vacancies in that sector. A uh, lack of funding and shit pay is keeping people out of it. You would be able to, uh, it would be quicker to train people in social care than it would uh, uh, doctors and nurses. And so that could be a viable option to at least take off a tiny percentage of the fucking burden on uh, the NHS. Of course, we do have staff shortages uh, that are major in the NHS as well. Doctors, nurses, ambulance staff and ancillary staff all suffering from, short, uh, from staff shortages. Um, exacerbated by Brexit because Brexit was a fucking bad idea um, but do not forget we did not vote for Brexit for the economy or for the NHS or for productivity or for freedom uh, fuck knows I voted for it um, the government has pointed out of course that we have 34,100 more doctors and 44,800 more nurses than in 2010. But that is nowhere near enough to uh, care for the growing number of patients in an increasingly sick and elderly population. Uh, this, when you look at the funding and everything else, actually I'll, I'll go through because this is about the funding. Um, because the final bit of the quadrilogy of fuck up um, in the NHS is underfunding, uh, which is another thing that the government likes to tell you. And I've had friends tell me, and they've sent me over, well, if you have a look, if you have a look, have a look, the uh, NHS has actually been getting more money, has actually been getting more money than ever, more money than ever. Um, however, what is never taken into account is you may be putting more money in, but are patients getting more? Uh, so uh, the growth in demand for healthcare has exceeded the increase in government funding since the 2008 financial crash. In October 2020, the think tank Health Foundation said the NHS funding would need to grow at twice the historic rate of the 2010s to meet demand. Uh, so we've got underfunding, staff shortages, weak capital investment, and a neglect of adult social care, plus more. The next time someone uh, tells you about uh, how the NHS should be privatized and everything else, uh, this is it. Will they tell you about the funding? Ask them, what is that funding compared to the growth of demand? They won't be able to answer because it's not something people look at. But that's the fucking uh, reality there. Um, 
final news story is the members of the House of Lords are preparing to slow attempts to axe thousands of uh, pieces of EU legislation, uh, with some warning that this will not pass uh, this year. I spoke about it yesterday briefly, and one of the things that was coming out in 2023, um, where we are going to basically rip up all of the EU legislation that we moved over when we left the EU. Um, it is madness. Uh, we do not have enough time to do it. It will destroy fucking countless things. And the House of Lords are going to be there to fight it, which is depressing because the House of Lords should not be the only people there to uh, stand up for such things and is one of the only reasons at the moment that you can see for the House of Lords to stay. Uh, the, the inability to get rid of uh, a Lord gives them carte blanche to say, well, fuck you, government. Um, but all in all, you should probably get rid of the House of Lords. So what are you going to do? Um, well, this has been fun. Uh, I shall talk to you tomorrow. Thanks, bye.